In November last year, veteran Conservative MSP Murdo Fraser said on Twitter that choosing to identify as non-binary was as valid as choosing to identify as a cat. A transgender activist reported the tweet to the police, who subsequently logged it as a hate crime incident. Murdo Fraser has announced that he will now take legal action against the force. So he joins me now. Murdo Fraser, thanks very much for joining us on the show. Can I ask you firstly, thanks, you. when did you first hear, how did you find out, in other words, that your tweet had in fact been logged as a hate incident with the Scottish police? Well, this happened back in November when I shared an article uh, by a fellow columnist of mine on the, the Scotsman newspaper critiquing the Scottish government's policy on having a non-binary action plan. Uh, it's, uh, as you said, a, a trans rights activist, unbeknownst to me, then reported that to the police as a hate crime. Now, I knew nothing about that uh, at the time, that the police recorded it as a non-crime hate incident. The only reason I found out about it was that the complainer then reported me to the Ethical Standards Commissioner, who is the individual who uh, oversees the conduct of parliamentarians in Scotland. And the Ethical Standards Commissioner dismissed uh, the complaint that was made that I'd breached the Parliamentary Code of Conduct, but in, in, in common with his, his normal practice, then wrote to me to tell me this complaint had been made. And had it not been for that, I would still be oblivious to the fact that this non-crime hate incident had been recorded against me. Uh, and when, incidentally, I asked the police uh, how many other such incidents might have been recorded against me, they couldn't tell me because they said that these weren't recorded against the name of the alleged perpetrator, but only in the name of the complainer. And this raises all sorts of serious issues. I'm, I'm very grateful to the, the Free Speech Union who've been very supportive of me uh, throughout this, this episode. We are taking a, a, a legal challenge to police Scotland because we believe their action is unlawful in at least three respects. Firstly, because it breaches uh, human rights law, which protects freedom of speech and specifically protects expressions of political opinion. Secondly, uh, under the Equality Act, there's a, there's a protection uh, for gender critical views, which this was. And thirdly, it's a breach of the Data Protection Act because they're, they're holding information about me uh, that they don't have any legitimate right to hold. But we know so I'm waiting for a response from the police. But we know that they've been doing this for a long time. There was a freedom of information request from the Times newspaper that discovered that the police have a database of offensive comments, including many, many jokes uh, posted online. Uh, and they haven't informed the people that they've, uh, they've logged. They've just recorded these in a list. Isn't this going to get a whole lot worse, though, after tomorrow, after April the 1st, uh, when uh, these are going to be recorded w with greater aggression? I mean, haven't the police said they've pledged to investigate every single complaint? Yes, this is the real concern about the new act that comes into play in midnight tonight, because the police have said uh, they will investigate every single complaint that they receive. They are likely to be deluged with complaints uh, against people in public life. Already on social media, there are, there are activists uh, who, are, who are making a call for complaints to be made to the police. You can see people who are prominent in public life with gender critical views, such as J.K. Rowling, for example, generating hundreds or potentially thousands of complaints. The police have said that they'll investigate every one. And if they're going to record every single one as a non-crime hate incident, that's going to not only take up a huge amount of police time, but if they're currently operating an unlawful policy, that's going to mean they're going to fall foul of the law and be open to potential claims from a huge variety of people. So apparently you were put on the interim vulnerable persons database, or at least the, the complainant was, on the basis of your tweet about the cat. Apparently there's uh, over 850,000 people on that database. There's one in six of the Scottish population. Hamza Youssef is now saying that he will actually make sure that people are investigated if they make vexatious complaints. So you've got those complaints, and then people are going to be complaining about the complainants. Where does this end? See, the, the problem with what Hamza Yusuf said the other day is you get the sense he's just making this up uh, as he goes along. The, the, the Police Scotland have been running a very active uh, media campaign over the last number of weeks, encouraging people to come forward to make complaints. Now, they can't, on the one hand, encourage people to complain about uh, tweets or anything said that offends them. On the other hand, threaten people that will take action against vexatious complaints. These two things don't, don't compute. Either you're encouraging people to complain complain with what offends them or you're warning them not to. So the Scottish government are all over the place on this, as are Police Scotland, who keep changing their story 
about what their policy is on the recording of non-crime hate incidents. Well, I'm just really frustrated that you know, having written to the Chief Constable back in December asking for a meeting that we can sit down and discuss this, it, it took me 12 weeks to get a reply. It didn't come from her, it came from my local Chief Inspector in Perth where I live. So the police need to start taking this seriously, otherwise they're going to be deluged with complaints, driven by activists, and they won't have time to do any other work and clear up real crimes. Well, I, I was speaking earlier to former SNP councillor Austin Sheridan, and he made the case that if you say something that is offensive or upsetting uh, or, or, or hateful, then of course you deserve to be investigated. Presumably your comment about um, non-binary identities being similar to identifying as a cat would fall into that category. I mean, when you said that, I mean, do you, th do you accept that you, you had said something that would cause offence? There's no right in law not to be offended. First of all, I, I don't accept the premise that it was offensive. It was an expression of a political criticism of Scottish government policy. But there's no right not to be offended. People say offensive things to me all the time uh, on social media and elsewhere. Somebody saying, for example, that a man can become a woman simply by saying he's a woman, and that gives them access to women's only spaces, is to me deeply offensive. But I wouldn't dream of reporting that to the police and saying that's a hate crime. Well, and yet, we're going to get into a... Murdo, can I just ask, though, because the, the, the SNP have said very explicitly that the, th the threshold will be very, very high. The police aren't going to just investigate things that are frivolous or trivial. But if that's the case, then your tweet, they clearly classify as reaching that very high threshold. That's disturbing, isn't it? Well, it is disturbing, but, but bear in mind, my, my, my tweet dates back to November. This is before the, the new Hate Crime Act comes into force. So it was being dealt with under the pre-existing policy of Police Scotland, where everything that is reported to them is, is recorded as a non-crime hate incident if it doesn't meet the threshold of criminality. And, it's, and that decision is based entirely on the perception of the complainer. So if any complainer says... I regard this as offensive and hateful. Police Scotland, under current policy, will record that as a hate incident. Now, what's interesting about this is, following the, the, the Harry Miller case in the Court of Appeal, I think two years ago, three years ago, the College of Policing in England had to change their policy to comply with the law. So they no, no longer record non-crime hate incidents in that way. For reasons best known to themselves, Police Scotland didn't take the same action. They are still pursuing the same policy prior to the Miller case. And that's why we think the policy currently being deployed by Police Scotland is unlawful. But of course, once the Hate Crime Act comes into force in midnight tonight, and we, are, we see the deluge we're expecting of many hundreds, if not thousands, more complaints coming in, that's just going to lead to yet more non-crime hated incidents being recorded based on pre-existing Police Scotland policy which, again, I think is probably unlawful. Well, uh, fascinating stuff. Um, I, I trust you'll be able to come back on the show at some other point to give us an update. Murdo Fraser, thanks ever so much for joining me on the show. Thank you.